This is the Used Car Dealer Podcast. Zach here, and we have an awesome episode of the Used Car Dealer Podcast with Kieran O'Brien, the founder and CEO of Shop Genie, which is an automotive repair platform coming out of stealth mode June 17th. Kieran, thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thanks for having me, Zach. And I want to kick things off and start about your impressive background. So tell me about being a young entrepreneur. And if I'm not mistaken, you sold your first company when you were 21 years old. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a long journey. I've kind of uh I feel like I've been an entrepreneur through and through, um, you know, since I was a kid, kind of like you know, flipping sneakers, the lemonade stands, the whole the whole nine yards. But um started my first like business that actually made money uh, when I was 16. Uh, I was basically, it was like a freelance business, basically um, doing social media and marketing for uh, auto repair shops, actually, um, and some car dealerships as well back in the day. Um, and so that's kind of how I got my my start. And it was always automotive. I've always been a car guy. I've always been in the automotive industry in and around it. Um, that freelance business ended up morphing into uh, more of like a performance marketing agency. So uh, when I was like 18, 19 years old, I was running, um, I was running marketing campaigns for some really large aftermarket parts distributors and uh, managing like 10 to $14 million a year in, in paid spend on like Google and Facebook for them. And so it's a lot of, a lot of responsibility for like an 18, 19 year old kid, but that was kind of my first uh, foray into the automotive industry. And then um, soon after that, I started a, a software company. Um, actually not in the automotive industry, but it was a data analytics software company and, uh, started that in 2020, sold it in July of 2022. And, uh, yeah, ever since I've just been kind of figuring out what I want to do next. And I, I decided that I wanted to jump back into automotive. So. Wow. That's beyond impressive. You're a country mile ahead of anyone, your age group. So extremely impressive. And, you know, taking a step back, so how do you first get acquainted with the auto repair market and what problems did you see in that space? Yeah. So my, uh, my first, uh, my first mentor was the owner of a multi-location auto repair shop group of auto repair shops. And, um, I cold emailed him one day cause I I'd heard about him and I wanted to, I wanted to learn about, uh, the industry and, um, I ended up interning for him for a little while and running the social media and, um, you know, spending some time at the shops. And I just remember interacting with the software that they were using, whether it was their business management system or uh, the the CRM products and marketing products they were using. And I just remember thinking to myself at, you know, whatever, 16, 17 years old, um, like, man, this is really outdated. Like this is, this looks like software that was built in the nineties and it hasn't mm-hmm. changed. And so, you know, back then I didn't know anything about software, right? So I didn't do anything about it. And, uh, you know, then I, you know, fast forward five, six years later, I sold my software company and now I know enough to, to start a, a software company and I feel confident doing that. So I kind of uh, went back to uh, check out those auto repair softwares and just kind of the state of the market. And there had been some great advancements on the cloud-based management s- system side of things. So again, very similar to the dealership industry. There's these business management softwares, but then the complementary CRMs and marketing softwares to go along with those, much like Selly, um, they just hadn't made any progress, and they were they were still kind of stuck in the stone ages. And so that's kind of how I how I stumbled across the opportunity. Yeah, very uh, a lot of continuity with Selly and used car dealerships. And coming out of the pandemic, what do you think are some of the biggest opportunities you've seen for auto repair shops? Yeah, absolutely. Um, digital customer experiences are everything now. Um, and quite frankly, I uh, my, my business partner actually was in the auto, uh, automotive dealership space, in the automotive sales side of the industry for a long time. And we, we talk about this a lot. The auto repair industry is five to eight years behind the dealership industry. Wow. And so all the technology that's been standardized, the Selly Automotive CRMs of the world in in the dealership side and sales side has not transferred over to the service side and the independent auto repair side. And so things like um, automated marketing campaigns, online scheduling, um, you know, just really like review generation, basic stuff uh, just quite frankly has not existed in this industry. Uh, and if it has, it's been very subpar. 
And so I think one of the one of the easiest ways you know the the sales cycle for uh, for a repair shop is very different from a dealership where you're you're just servicing the vehicle. You don't have to worry about selling it. Um, and so one of the simplest ways for repair shops to come out, you know, this was uh, obviously through the pandemic, but also now uh, moving into you know a, a whole new digital world with lots of Gen Z consumers uh, keeping their cars for longer than ever and and needing to repair them. Um, just something as simple as having an online scheduling tool on your website can be a make or break uh, item for for a repair shop in 2023. So Shop Genie, they're coming out of stealth June 17th. And for dealers maybe unaware of the Silicon Valley lingo and what exactly stealth means, can you let us know that as well as kind of more about the ideation that founded Shop Genie? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So stealth mode basically is uh, when a company is working on something without um, publicly marketing it. And so it basically, number one is to kind of keep our uh, our ideas and our progress away from our competitors. That's part of it. But um, a, a bigger part is just to be able to kind of operate in a silo and only take on customers that we want to take on while we're building and iterating. And so... Um, you know, a lot of software companies choose to do this where they work on something for months or even years without putting a name to it, without saying it publicly. Um, and then that way, when they eventually announce themselves to the world, the product is actually polished and ready and uh, doesn't have a ton of crazy bugs. And so, you know, we were lucky enough. We own the second or third largest Facebook group um, for auto repair shop owners. And so we didn't have to go out and market us, market ourselves a whole bunch to get some beta customers. So we've got dozens of incredible uh, beta customers that we were able to bring in without talking about the company publicly um, to come and use the product and, and give user feedback. And we've been doing that for the last uh, 10 months, eight, eight nine months, maybe. Um, and so, yeah, you asked about kind of the, the origin story. So... Uh, my my first business before I started my software company was, like I said, a marketing agency. And we worked with a lot of auto repair shops and auto service centers. And we were using a white-labeled CRM software. And we were trying to kind of jerry-rig it together to make it work for these repair shops. And it just didn't work. So you know, this software did a lot of the same things that now Shop Genie does, but it was a generic one. It wasn't auto repair specific. And so we would use it for texting and reviews and stuff like that. But um, there were just so many shortcomings to that software that we realized we had to build it on our own. And so that's kind of the, uh, the impetus or the, the beginning origin story of, of Shop Genie. That's awesome. Really interesting. And what sort of traction and feedback have you received while in stealth? Oh, it's been amazing. We've got some of the, the best, brightest, most influential shop owners in the space. Um, I'm assuming very similar to the dealership industry where there's you know these guys that are kind of thought leaders in the industry. And uh, we have the privilege of having a lot of them as our earliest customers. And you know the, the feedback loops are just incredible. Like the, These guys, they're, they're tired of being um, you know, mistreated or ignored by their software vendors. And so we really just try to go above and beyond, over communicate, provide the best customer experience that we can. Um, and I always joke about this, like we call ourselves a customer experience platform mm. and we're, we're not a B2B company. We're a B2B to C company because right. we sell our software to, to repair shops, but ultimately the, the repair shops customer is the one that's interacting with it. Right. So that's something that we really focus on is creating incredible customer experiences for our customers, customers, but upstream, we also try to create incredible customer experiences for our customers. And so just kind of going above and beyond, taking all their feedback into account, really listening to them. I think, you know, if there happens to be any uh, software founders or anybody like that listening, um, and, you know, for, for a matter of fact, this is even uh, uh, useful for even somebody like a dealership principal. But um, if you just really make your customers feel heard and feel listened to, that goes above and beyond anything else. It's more important than product, it's more important than marketing. Customer service, the customer experience that you provide is absolutely everything, especially in a world where software companies are very hands-off typically. I couldn't agree with more with that statement. And what are some of the major pain points in the auto repair space your solution is solving? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest one is online scheduling. So we've built the industry's first real-time online scheduling tool that books appointments based on bay, technician, and service availability. Um, 
and it's uh it's it's so good and we believe so strongly in it that we're actually giving it away for free wow um so if there if there are any repair shops listening uh we are we basically are giving away our online scheduling tool completely 100 percent free for life um to you know so you can try out online scheduling at your shop so that's that's a big one so um, I think it goes understated how important it is for customers to be able to come to your website, whether it's two o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve or just the middle of a work day and your front desk receptionist just happens to be tied up doing something else. It's really important that you don't miss those customers. And, you know, there's some staggering statistics, Zach, out there. Um, you know, for example, there's one about how 61% of Gen Z consumers prefer online scheduling or web chat uh, to a phone call, right? And this is this is just this isn't uh, unique to auto repair. This is all industries. So if you're a dealership principal, whether it's for your sales department or your fixed ops department, just keep that in mind. You need to provide a way for customers to get in touch with you digitally, whether it's web chat or online scheduling. Ideally, both, um, because Gen Z does not want to pick up the phone and do this anymore. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that's that's a big thing is online scheduling. Outside of that, uh, we have an all-in-one CRM platform, so we actually handle websites and digital marketing for shops as well. And then we also have a CRM that does things like review generation, um, service reminders, appointment reminders. Um, you're able to see all of your shop metrics. So we have some some really interesting reporting as well around um, certain metrics that are important for a shop owner to track. All your marketing reporting as well is, is in one place. And so, um, yeah, I'll kind of wrap it up there. I think the the most important part of it is just consolidation. You know, our industry is is tired of. Uh, shop owners specifically are tired of dealing with so many different, um, you know, sometimes three, four, five different software vendors for all these different things. And we're consolidating it and putting it under, it under one roof. And what are some of the gems or previous lessons you've taken from your last startup and incorporated into Shop Genie? I think um, one, of, one of the ones is, is what I just touched on, which is customer service. I think you know, our, my last company was a, a direct to consumer software product. So there was just inherently less, uh, less time. We had, you know, 30, 40,000 active users. So uh, the customer experience is, is very different for, uh, uh, for a consumer startup, but for a, for a B2B startup, like, like ours and like Selly, um, it's very important that we go above and beyond with customer experience. And so definitely have, have started to focus on that more when it wasn't as much of a focus at, at my last startup. Um, and, uh, beyond that, I think product and, and avoiding tech debt, this is more of like a tech conversation, but you know, our last product, we had to do a big, uh, big replatforming refactor. Um, and that took a lot of time away from being able to ship product. And so in the tech world, if anybody's familiar with software, you know what I'm talking about, but essentially what it means is just building your software on the right stack of tools from day one so that you don't have to go back and redo all your hard work all over again. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, some of those lessons uh, we've learned at Silly too over the past. So definitely agree with that. And kind of a futures question. So battery electric vehicles, EV vehicles, they're taking a lot of consumer mind share here in San Francisco. I see Tesla's all the time. What are your thoughts when it comes to BV, EV vehicles in the auto repair space and the potential challenges or opportunities these vehicles present? Absolutely. Um, well, you know, the joke that I always like to say, and, you know, I, even when I tell like friends or family uh, about what I'm doing with Shop Genie, you know, one of the responses is always, well, isn't EVs going to kind of kill the auto repair industry? And my response to them is, no, EVs still get in accidents. They still need body work. They still have brakes. They still have tires. And on top of that, a lot of our, even our beta customers at Shop Genie um, are starting to lean more into hybrid and EV repair. So, you know, luckily with right to repair, I'm sure we'll talk about that soon, but uh, with right to repair, a lot of these shops are able to get their hands on uh, these OEM service guides from companies like Tesla or Lucid or what have you. Um, and they're able to repair and fix these vehicles. And, you know, these EV vehicles, while they might not have engines, they still have powertrains. And again, like I said, brakes and tires and all these other things that need to be repaired and that they need to keep up with their maintenance on. And, you know, quite frankly, there's just so many of these vehicles on the road that if, um, you know, if the dealerships were, were to try to handle that all on their own, um, the customers wouldn't be able to get their car fixed in time. And so the independent auto repair ecosystem here in America and, and worldwide 
is very important to um, to the consumers that are driving these vehicles. So how do you see the automotive repair space? And you kind of touched on this a little developing over the next couple of years with new legislation being pushed, like the right to repair bill. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right to repair has been an issue for, you know, like over 10 years. The reason that it's become even more of a hot button topic lately is because historically you could repair a car with an OBD2 scanner and, you know, and, and that's it and you're good. Uh, the problem now is a lot of these cars are, they're more computer than car now. So they're getting updates, software updates over the air. And uh, it just makes it difficult, uh, number one, for people to work on the cars, but then number two, for people to just keep up with what's happening, right? And so I think it's very important that right to repair exists. And of course, this goes beyond automotive. This is for, you know, fixing your iPhone or, um, or you know, for, for farmers to fix, fix their, um, their farm equipment. Um, you know, the reality is, there aren't Apple stores or Ford dealerships everywhere in America. Sometimes there's a customer that needs to get it fixed or wants to get it fixed by an independent auto repair shop. And again, to my previous point, if everybody had to get their cars fixed at the dealers, there would be a massive backlog. There wouldn't be enough, um, you know, enough service bays. You know, people would be waiting weeks or months to get their their vehicles fixed. And so again, the the independent repair facilities in America, there's over 250,000 of them, um, are a very important piece of the of the automotive ecosystem. Definitely. And lastly, can you give us an idea of what's coming down the pipeline for Shop Genie for the rest of 2023? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the big things that we're working on is the application of AI in our product. So uh, we have a product called Jasmine. Uh, which is our AI assistant for auto repair shops. She is the first, um, the first ch AI chatbot that's been trained on automotive repair specific data. So imagine for a moment having your own personalized chat GPT bot that knows everything about your auto repair shop. So she can answer uh, after hours questions. She can do scheduling. She can give you context from your previous repairs. Uh, she knows all about your vehicle. She knows all about your upcoming recommended services and all that. Um, and so it's just a really powerful thing that we're working on. It's not quite ready for prime time yet. So uh, it will be built into our CRM at some point in the next few months. But that's uh, a big focus for us in 2023. That's awesome. And I just want to say, Kieran, you're one of the most impressive entrepreneurs your age that I've talked to in the automotive industry. You're so thoughtful, so articulate. So it's been a pleasure having you on the Used Car Dealer podcast. And we'll link to your company, Shop Genie, as well. But I just want to personally thank you for coming on this podcast. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Zach. I appreciate it.